During this course, my eyes have been opened to many controversial issues relating to multiculturalism in America. Before this class, I was unfamiliar with what multiculturalism was. I was aware that some people thought multiculturalism was negative, whereas others thought it was positive. But I never knew the true meaning behind multiculturalism. I now understand that multiculturalism is the diversity of two or more cultures in a region, the concept that America was built on. Many people in America are immigrants. Therefore, our country is made up of people who have different educational backgrounds, customs, values, religions, and speak different languages. These differences are what allow America to be a very diverse society. Although America was built on the idea of being diverse, we continue to struggle with providing equal opportunities for all. One of the topics that I learned about in this class is the segregation issue in present Milwaukee. I have also learned more about the community as I have completed my service learning hours. Segregation in schools has caused me to question what I thought I knew. During the Civil Rights Movement, there was a massive effort to desegregate public schools across the nation. It was no secret that Milwaukee's public schools were racially segregated during the 1950s and 1960s, which was created by residential segregation. Lloyd Barbie, a leader in the segregation of Milwaukee public schools, filed a lawsuit that challenged segregation in public schools. He argued that the school board drew distinct boundaries based on the segregated housing patterns. A decade later, in 1976, Judge John Reynolds ordered the school board to integrate the schools immediately. It wasn't until March of 1979 where the school board agreed to implement a five-year desegregation plan. It took important figures to fight for equality among the two different races. Unfortunately, it is evident that schools around the United States continue to become more segregated by racial differences, which could be caused by an imbalance of income groups. For example, in Milwaukee, we can see that the majority of black people or minorities live in separate areas of the city, which relatively have a lower cost of living. Although segregation laws are no longer enforced, there are still many segregated communities within Milwaukee, and black citizens still face professional and educational segregation. For example, many minority students are forced to attend schools that are underfunded and have to live in segregated neighborhoods. This just so happens to be because of which side of the community you have grown up on. In America, the structure of our communities and neighborhoods determines the overall structure of our public schools. Attending school at UWM has allowed me the ability to see the poor structure of public schools in poverty-stricken neighborhoods. For my service learning project, I was allowed the opportunity to spend time with Highland Community School, a Milwaukee public school where I met many children. Most of these students here were black. As I walked down the hallways the first day, I couldn't help but notice the difference between my elementary school at home versus this one. At Highland, a classroom consisted of first, second, and third graders. It was obvious that some of these children came from a home where the income level was low. A handful of students wore worn down clothing, hair wasn't brushed, and the level of education of the child was lower than should be. The behavior of some children was also a surprise to me. Some kids were running around the classroom, not listening to the teacher, and doing whatever they wanted to do because the classroom lacked structure. This is different from a classroom that I would walk in on at my elementary school back at home. In a classroom at home, the teacher stood in front of the class and taught lessons, and children followed the rules. Therefore, seeing a setting like this was a shock to me. It is important that school systems have fully integrated classrooms to introduce students to diversity. Minority students deserve to see themselves represented in the classroom. I believe that it is crucial that everyone has equal opportunities, and in order to do this, people must create a fully integrated school system. It is not something that can be fixed quickly. It is something that will take time. But by taking the initiative to develop and enhance characteristics in all communities, our society and country will have a positive outlook on equal opportunity for all.